I can't get my cat Tiger over here, and I really want her to come and join me for today's cartooning course. I'm going to be doing a cartoon about cats. Well, yeah, cats, plural. I was going to say, I, was, I had to think there for a second. Was it about a cat, or was it about cats? But no, this one... No, wait, it's about a cat. I just remembered. Sometimes I forget exactly what I'm doing. And I have to go back to my original sketch, and as you can see, right... Where was it? Okay, okay, take two. I found it. I found the sketch. It's right here. Um, and yeah, as you can see, I really, these are really crappy sketches. They're always crappy, and my writing is just as bad. I have to go through and I have to really look and see what I put on here. But anyway, as long as you understand what you write, if you can, if you can interpret it and figure it out for yourself on your own comics, then that's what matters. And usually, if I stare at my my sketches and my rough drafts of my writing, I can get it figured out. So yes, today's comic is about a cat and owners. And I'm happy to say it's not going to be an awful pun either. It's actually just a regular cartoon with a gag on it. So the gag will be revealed at the very end of this. But yeah, I'm going to walk you through exactly how I make today's cartoon. Again, I have my trusty handy dandy Apple Pencil. But if you don't have an Apple Pencil, that's that's totally fine. It's awesome. You can use a regular pencil. You can just get some scrap paper if you want to follow along. Totally up to you. But if you have an Apple Pencil and an iPad Pro, like I have, um, you can follow along this way too, because that's what I'm using today. But this is going to be a, another panel cartoon of mine. It's for my syndicated series, Break of Day. That appears on GoComics.com and uh, elsewhere. I license out these cartoons. I do all kinds of things with them, which you can find out more in my cartooning course. And uh, in the future, too, I go over all this, all the, uh, all the essentials of where cartoons can go and actually make profit or do whatever you want with them. So anyway, I'm not going to keep talking about that. One last attempt to get Tiger over here. Tiger! Tiger! Hey, come here. Tiger. Tiger cat. Oh, she's here. But she won't hop up on my lap. She... Tiger, you realize you can be part of this video, but if you don't want to be, fine. All right, forget it. I tried. Sorry, guys. It, I do have a cat na named Tiger, and she's just not cooperating with today's video. So I'm not going to take up more of your time trying to get Tiger up here to uh, to uh, introduce this whole, whole thing. But instead, let's get rolling. I'm going to hop on my iPad. You're going to hear my voice change a little bit as the audio goes from this to that. But uh, follow along with me. This should be fun. All right, guys. As you can see, I have already my pre-made 5.5 inch by 5.5 inch panel up here on Procreate. And Procreate, it's got a funny name, but it is my app of choice for sketching on the iPad Pro. Uh, if you've been following me a little bit, then you'll know that it's a, it's a very, very cheap app. It's like, I think, $4.99, $5.99 on the... Uh, in the app store and i'm talking five dollars 99 cents not 599 dollars and it's awesome i just think it's a really cool app it makes drawing simple and um the effects you can get with it are i think better than anything else so i'm not going to get into that um watch previous videos and i kind of show you how i set up this uh pre-made uh canvas of mine but i'm going to go ahead and dive into this with um the iPad and I'm going to start by using the Apple pencil and going to the sketching area under brushes and with sketching I'm going to take out the technical pencil it's called and it's very technical let me tell you actually it's not but it's got a fancy name right so we're gonna go ahead and begin I'm gonna start by start by I'm actually gonna be sketching a a rat whoop I gotta hit open layers and I'm gonna start with a new layer and it's gonna be actually layer three on mine. Um, layer three is also a um, the name for the lines I have. If I had any kind of caption going into the actual cartoon, I would use that, but I'm not gonna be using a caption in the cartoon itself. It's gonna go underneath the panel when I'm done, so I don't need that. So I'm gonna start with a new layer and I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm sketching a big rat off the bat hey it rhymes what do you know they don't pay me just to come up with cartoons i'm i gotta rhyme sometimes too you know i'd be a rapper if i could but i don't think you want to hear me rap so <laughs> all right that's an awful joke 
All right, so I'm drawing a massive rat here. Um, I'm not using any references. I'm kind of going off the top of my head, but you know, a rat has a real big, um, ugly tail. And in this cartoon, the joke is that this is a massive rat, okay? And you'll see what it what I mean when I'm all done here. But what I'm going to do is I'm drawing, a, I, drew, I sketched out a big rat with a tail, obviously. And right here, I'm going to draw my cat. And the cat is going to be biting down on the bottom of this tail. And I'm going to do that as easy as possible. You don't need to get too complicated with it. I don't need to, I feel like I don't need to show the teeth or anything. I'm just drawing them. You know, um, he's got his mouth clamped down on the bottom there, and I'm going to draw him kind of like, I like drawing fat cats. Uh, fat cats are just based off of my cat, Tiger, who I mentioned at the beginning of the video, who wouldn't co cooperate with me, Tiger. You should get on the video, you know? Damn it, we don't make these, uh, these don't have good, you know, special effects or anything, so I thought having Tiger on it would be so cool, and she just didn't cooperate this time. She's listening to me. She's sitting right here. But anyway, fat cats are based off of my uh, my big fat cat tiger. So that's why I kind of like using them. So this is pretty good. I think this is the angle I want to go with this. Um, I'm also going to have a doorway right here. And so I'm going to sketch a little door, just some straight lines. And if you know, if you hold the pencil still for just a couple seconds, Procreate actually makes you a straight line on its own. See how wobbly, like, check this out. See how wobbly that is? You hold it straight, and look at that. It magically, magically straightens itself out. It's incredible, let me tell you. So, here we go. And this is just our sketch. It doesn't have to be perfect, but um, that's going to be it. Now, what I'm going to draw next is a guy and a girl, presumably man and wife, I'd say. Um, and they're going to be standing here on the edge. And here's what I'm going to do with them. I'm going to just a, your typical guy and girl. Nothing special here. I usually try to give them some funky hair, you know, uh, nothing too outrageous. The stuff you'd see kind of on, on any individual. And I'm going to draw... The guy there, I'm going to draw the girl here, and give her some hair with a ponytail, and they're all going to have kind of just a expression of what the heck is this. And I think this angle is going to be good. They're kind of like, they're basically um, kind of walking into their into the, the main room, you know? Like, call it a living room, call it what you will. And they see this being dragged into the house. A giant, giant rat. And what we're going to do now is draw the background. And again, you see I just drew right through the cat. It's no big deal. This is all the pencil sketching, so... No biggie at all. Um, I'm big on drapes. I like drawing drapes in the background. I don't know why. I just think, you know, every most houses have drapes. If they don't, you have blinds. So sometimes I'll do blinds instead. But I try to make the windows kind of, you know, like fairly realistic. Um, we'll have like the edge of the room right there. So just give it a little mark to indicate that. Um... We can even, I was going to say, we can even go as far as, uh, what else does this need? I'm going to add a little uh, rug on the bottom, and it's a little muffled, muffled up from the, the rat being dragged across it. I think it adds a nice little element, though, to a, to a living room, you know? I think I might actually, looking at this again, I'm going to add a couch in the background. Why not, right? I think a couch might add some cool little more home homely, is that the word, elements to it. Um, awesome. I like this. I like it. I think this is going to work okay. 
And as always, I sign my name first, just so I don't forget about it and remember that I need to sign it. So, okay, that is our pencil layer. Now, what I always do is I hit the opacity button and I bring this down to about a, keep going, keep going, keep going, about a 37, 32%, that's good. Just so it's, it's not dark, you can see through it when we ink. And now we're gonna start inking. So I'm gonna make a new layer here. And guys, if I'm flying through this, and I realize for some of you I probably am, um, what I just suggest is hang in there with me. I'll have some tutorials that go a lot smaller, like I plan on just covering like inking sometimes, and sometimes just coloring, sometimes just penciling, you know? But this is like the whole shebang um, today. This is like the start from beginning to end with uh, using Procreate and creating a gag cartoon. And and uh, I'm doing this just to kind of show you how the whole process and people kind of enjoy seeing the whole process, so that's why. But there are smaller simplified versions, but I feel like I can kind of run through some of this stuff. And I always say it too, if you do get an iPad Pro and Procreate, you'll catch on. It takes practice. It'll take a lot of just fine tuning and, and, and figuring it out, but you'll know exactly what I'm doing pretty soon. Um, but okay, back to inking. I start, I created a new layer. As you can see, it's layer four. I hit my brushes and I'm going to inking and then I'm taking up the technical pen. It's my weapon of choice for this. I love inking with it. I feel like it's really got that old school look and vibe to it. Um, the brush size, I'm doing about 25% and I make sure the opacity is at 100% on that too. So I'm going to start just on the left hand side with the door and with this too I just give it straight lines and again Procreate does that for you. I don't need a ruler or anything which is quite nice because I think if you take a ruler across an iPad Pro um, there's a good chance you're going to break it and shit that would suck. Um, <laughs> you'd have to... Uh, rulers have metal on it and wood and wooden iPads probably don't go to, go well together. So luckily Procreate um, takes care of that all for you. So you don't even have to have to worry about it. But as you see, now I'm just going into the door handle. And again, I zoom, as you can also see, in and out quite frequently to um, kind of see what I'm doing and go from there. And with this rat, you know, he's got ratty hair. Um, like rats do and so I'm giving them some like furry kind of ratty hair and the um, the foot on them is this real simple basic and then on the bottom here I'm gonna add some more kind of ratty hair in fact I'm gonna give him some extra long hair here and we'll get into some finer details when we wrap this up but is that for now I think that's good the tail is going to be relatively smooth, um, give, them, give them less thick lines toward the cat's mouth. And then through here too, just kind of smooth lines toward the mouth there. And give them some lines in between. You can see those are a lot skinnier uh, lines. And again, Procreate, the harder you press down, the thicker the line is going to be. So. Uh, those in between lines I pressed down kind of light and same with this rug here I have kind of darker outlines and then the inside of this rug I'm gonna use I'm not pressing down hard and just using like sketchy um, line work for this which I think will work very well we'll find out won't we when it's all done and over we'll know how well it works <laughs> it's an obvious statement isn't it Okay, so I'm going to do the shadowing and stuff like that toward the end. Um, and I generally, generally start from left to right, so I'm actually going to go ahead and sign this puppy. And now we're going to work on the cat, and I didn't mean to make that little mark there, so I erased that. Now for the kitty. I am going to start with the nose. And as you see, I'm just adding some minor details. I'm going to add some 
dots for the whiskers. And I'm going to go ahead and put these whiskers in. Now, with the whiskers, I do it really quick. And I usually add four of them for cats. Four is kind of like, a, I think, a good standard for, um, for whiskers. And I decided I am going to add a little tooth there. I think that adds kind of a nice little element. Whoops. All right, so we got the tooth. And now we're going to do the feet. And now to the eyes. All right, our cat is coming along. I like giving them perky perky ears, and I usually add like a little shadowing in the inside of it, give it some depth. And this is just going to be your basic cat. I don't think I'm going to make them striped or anything. I'm just going to give them kind of a... Look like that. All right. I think this is going to work okay. Now, on to the body of the kitty. I'm going to just, again, I give him kind of a furry look. And onto the tail. And you can see how it's coming along, you know? And again, like, it doesn't matter with the pencil outline that I drew through the cat earlier with the background. It doesn't matter. That's on a different layer. So we are, we're in good shape here with this kitty dragging a big rat through the door. Um, now I'm going to work on the background area here. These are the wood panels you often see in homes or apartments, condos. <laughs> you don't have to be too, too specific in the cartooning world, let me tell you. You can get away with anything. That's why I love being a cartoonist. Uh, I can get away with a lot of stuff that in reality would never happen. Would you ever see this in reality? You know, a big cat coming through the door with a, um, a rat this big? I don't know. I kind of doubt it. Maybe they exist. You know, some people believe in the uh, Loch Ness Monster, Bigfoot, um, all, those, all those beasts, and hey, maybe there's, maybe there's actually rats this big. I've been on subways in New York City, and um, I've seen some close. So maybe this, maybe this isn't a stretch. I don't know. All right, I'm working on this back window now. And now we're going to get to the man and the wife. I'm just going to give him kind of a, I call it a simple nose, nothing too crazy. My noses used to be a lot more rounded, and sometimes I still use them like a round, rounded nose, but I kind of prefer now this more, I call it realistic looking, even though it's really not, but... I hear dogs in the background. I think they know I'm sketching a cat. All right. And here we go. I'm going to finish up with the eye on this guy. And I always say with cartooning, it doesn't have to be perfect, um, depending on your style. You know what I mean? I've, I'm more of, I don't call it a sketchy style. I'll try to perfect the lines as good as possible, but in no way, shape, or form are they perfect. They're not, and it's okay, though. They've worked for me, you know? I, it, it's okay. You might have a sketchier, sketchier look, um, and that's fine, too. I think it's very important for you to develop your own style, so if you are following along with me, that is totally awesome and cool, um, but from it, you know, see what kind of elements you can create that make your own style. Because honestly, yeah, once I do this, it's copyrighted. Sorry, guys. <laughs> this is, it's my cartoon. I think you'd say the same thing if uh, you were drawing a cartoon and showing people, like, it's your work. You got to protect it. And uh, that being said, yeah, you just want to make your own style. And by any means, you can you can do the same gag and everything I'm doing, just... Hang it up on the fridge, whatever you want to do. Just don't, if you publish it, uh, you might get some funny looks because it'll already be out there by the time you watch this. But um, 
that being said, yeah, definitely create your own style and take little elements. Hopefully I'll be able to show you some bits and pieces of things I do that you can cop totally copy. I mean, oh, there's Tiger here. That's the that's my cat. Now she wants to join in. Too late, Tiger. You miss you miss your golden time to shine because we're on Procreate now and I don't have a camera on you. So the cat just missing out, I'll tell ya. All right, guys and girls, this is the completed inking. What I am gonna, well, I shouldn't say completed. What I'm gonna do next is go in and add some shadowing and fine tuning. I am gonna take off the pencil layer though, so it's more clear for me. And I'm gonna go in, and I like adding, whoops, I have it on eraser, it's not good. I have the same size um, ink tool, which is, again, inking the technical pen, and it's on 25 for the size. And I'm going to go through and uh, I like adding some sketchy shadowing to a lot of this. Oops. And let's see, I'm not going to add too much, just a little bit to around the cat itself. A little bit here too by the rat. And I'm actually I'm gonna add some um, kind of carpeting elements too. Just some just these little like just dots, nothing nothing fancy, but it kind of indicates there's some carpeting there a little bit. And I'm gonna add some shadowing up here too, just for the fun of it. Now. As you can see, I'm getting up for a second to kind of move around a little bit, but oh, there's my cat, Tiger. Again, she's hoping to join in any minute, but it's too late, Tiger. You can't, it's it, it's way too late. But anyway, yeah, you see this? It's, um. sorry, I'm moving into a different space here. I'm getting bombarded by my cat and everything, and it's just crazy, so I had to move into a little, little space that's a little bit more quiet, and that's again what I love about Cro Procreate compared to a drawing board. You can take this anywhere, which is fantastic. But anyway, this is my whole, this is the whole um, composition and I think it looks good. I don't feel like I need to add any more shadows to it. So let's go ahead and hop into coloring. <laughs> Tiger, please leave me alone now. I wanted you to join in at the beginning, but now you're starting to annoy me here. She's hopping all over my iPad. What I'm going to do with coloring is all the colors go underneath the inked line. So my ink line layer is layer four. So I created a new layer and it's underneath that because everything you do underneath it, you have the solid black lines above it, which is great. That's what you want. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the background here. Um, when I say background, the back wall area. And you can be as sloppy as you want because we're gonna go over this with other lines. And I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna make the wall a, eh, I'm trying to think, what's best? Uh, you know what, I'm gonna go with just kind of like a tannish, light tan, that color, typical wall area. And then on this side, I'm going to make it a little bit darker. And I'm just using the fill option. Um, there's a little S on the top. I don't know if you're able to see it or not, but when you click it, you can tap the corners of the area that you want to fill and magically it'll fill it for you when you drag the color down to do it. Again, this is something you're going to have to practice with and you know a lot more of what I'm talking about when you actually do it hands on. It's like riding a bike. Um, once you got, you know, you can watch a video on riding a bicycle all day long, but until you actually hop in and do it uh, yourself, a video is not going to do too much. So you actually have to practice on your own. But this will give you some, this, you know, what this does do is give you groundwork on how I do it and what I think is easiest to like fill in the areas to color. And um, so, yeah, I think it's definitely beneficial. And if you're not using an iPad Pro, this part's going to be. A, probably not for you, but you can definitely color with anything else you want. Crayons or markers. Hey, 
whatever's best. So um, I went ahead on the same layer, I did the walls and the carpet. Now I'm gonna start a new layer and go to the door. And you know I started a new layer because you see how the colors overlap the door over here? Um, if I have a new layer above the layer I just did, anything I do on this is gonna go over that. You know what I mean? So it's not gonna interfere with the colors. See how the brown just went over the, the colors I had from the wall? So that's awesome, that makes it easy. And that's why I do it. Um, it layers are your friends because they will help make your life easier when it comes to coloring. Same thing here with the drapes. You see how the part of the wall color has gone inside the drape? Well, what I'm doing is using that little S tool that I call it. I'm sure it's got a technical name, but I call it the S tool because it looks like an S. And I go over and uh, do a marquee around the drapes. And we're going to make this kind of a, I think a green, like a dark greenish um there we go. Perfect. Uh, drapes. I don't know who has dark green drapes in their home, but hey, I think they're stylish, right? I'm going to do the... You know what? I take that back. I was going to do the wood here that separates the window, but instead I'm going to do the actual outdoor um, window part. And we'll go over that wood later on. Uh, so this outdoor area is going to be a blue. Feel free to make it, if you want to make it nighttime or anything, you can do that also. But I'm going to give it a nice blue look. And I think from here, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is start a new layer. So I'm going to go above that one. This is going to be layer 7. And here is where I'm going to add the brown area for the window. I'm also going to make a big uh, gray rat here. So I'm going to trace over all the fur for the rat and get this puppy done. I've been on a kick today where I call things puppy, but this isn't a puppy. This is a drawing. It's a cartoon. What am I talking about? I think it, was, it must have been off a movie or something. Someone said something about a puppy, and I just call everything a puppy now, which is, is very confusing. All right. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to make this rat gray. There we go. I just filled him in. And you can see where I kind of slipped a little bit. You see this little area of um, carpeting that I didn't color in? What you can do is go back to the layer that the that that was in, hold your finger down on the screen and it will give you that exact color of the carpet again. And so I'll just go back in and fill that in real quick so I don't forget about it. And actually, I take that back. I didn't, I didn't even have to do that because that's gonna be the rug. Never mind. But anyway, well, hey, if you ever do need to go back to an area to color back in, that's how you do it. So it works just the same. I'm going to do this wood paneling back here now, give it a nice soft wood, I think, uh, wood color, um, brown, like this, I think will be good. And from here too, let's go ahead and do the couch. And this couch, I'm trying to think what would make a nice color. We have a lot of one thing I always advocate is to study colors. And you'll notice that the tones of these colors are all kind of in the same palette. Um, so I'm going to make this kind of a, um, oh, let's go with a purplish, kind of a light purple couch like that, I think works really well. You don't want to make, when I say the same color palette, you want to make things in the same color palette too, so that any viewers looking at it, their eyes don't go crazy looking at something that's too bright or doesn't fit, you know, with what you're doing. And so I really think it's important to color, um, study color and kind of know what, what to do when and how it all works. And there's a ton of videos out there about that. And I, I plan on eventually putting out some too on just that. 
But coloring is important, um, unless you're doing black and, well, even with black and white, you have to know tones and shades. But um, coloring is really, there's a, a fine art to that alone, and it's important to know. So anyway, moving on, what I'm going to do next, I started a new layer above layer 7, and I'm going to color in the rat tail. Whoops. So I'm going to trace the, the tail. And again, I got the S tool for this, and I'm just, you go over and you see a little marquee being made. And once I have that done, you can go to, I know a rat's tail is pretty pink, so I'm gonna do a pinkish tail on him. Perfect. And now I'm gonna actually do his foot too, and I'm gonna make that they're also kind of pink, but I'm going to drop it down a, uh, a tone or two. And I'm actually just going to color this in by hand because it's a really kind of a um, small area. So small areas, I usually don't use the marquee tool, the S tool, um, to color in. But I got that done. I'm going to go ahead and do the carpeting too. I'm going to make it kind of a bluish carpet. Um, and what I'm going to do with that is just do the whole thing blue because I have the lines in there to indicate a different tone. So we'll stick with that. And then when we get into shading later, I'll go back in and add some cool shading elements to it to make it really come alive and pop and all that good stuff. So... All right, awesome. That's all highlighted. I'm going with the blue for that. You see how it kind of complements the couch a little bit um, with that color. And I'm going to go ahead and do the cat now, too. Let's color this kitty. Um, Try to think what would be a good color for him. I have a big gray rat. I'm thinking orange for the cat. I know I do a lot of orange cats, but I think... I think that will actually fit in quite well uh, for this cartoon. And when it's all said and done, when you look at it visually, I think it'll work. We'll find out. Because um, when you color with Procreate and online, whoops, I meant to just come over here. You can, um, you can fix your mistakes really easily. So as uh as a bob ross might say there are no mistakes only happy accidents and happy accidents are very easy to fix on here so uh if you have one uh it's not not bad it's not as bad as like changing a diaper or something it's really really easy to fix and clean up if you want but i think this orange for the cat works really well so i'm gonna run with it i think awesome all right, and the next one, next thing I'm going to color, I'm going to keep it on that layer, and I'm going to do the uh, the shirts for the people over here. And I'm going to do a, a new layer for the skin, so it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to give her kind of a lavender look like that. I think will look good. And for the fellow, let's give him, he's actually going to have kind of a yellowish shirt. I know, I don't think yellow's in style. Uh, it might be, I don't know. But uh, I think it's going to work pretty well for this. So I'm going to do like a, yeah, I like it. And you can see I overlapped a little bit um, because it's the same layer. So I filled that in with yellow. Her shirt went off, went into his a little bit. Okay. I'm going to create a new layer, layer nine. And this is where I'm going to get in some more details. I'm going to give the cat kind of a, uh, a lighter kind of white, um, mouth area, I guess is the best thing to call it <laughs> where his whiskers pop out and everything. It's a, it's definitely lighter than the rest. Uh, I'm going to give him a, pinkish nose and he's got a little tooth showing it's hard to see which is fine um, and that will be completely white as will his eyes 
And so I'm just going to go in and fill in the eyes. And our cat is done until we shade here. Next, I'm going to do the skin of the couple. And I have some pre-made, um, you see it says thought leadership, that's from a client of mine, but I have some pre-made palettes that you can use with a lot of different like skin tones and things that I use um, on a regular basis. So that's something you probably want to do if you go back to a color a lot of times. Like I like using this Deviant Dawn palette because there's a lot of skin tones in here and colors that are pretty common. It just makes it easier to, um, to go in and grab a color that you need. So as you can see, she's got a kind of a skin, skin tone on her that is pretty, I'd say, common. Uh, you can diversify this as much as you want. You can add definitely dark tones, different, um, anything you want. But this is kind of like my common area of skin tones in my pre-made palette that I have. So I usually just pick from that. And there's no rule to what, you know, make them any color you want. Um, he's a little bit darker. And I... That's one thing. I try to mix them up. Um, so if you have two humans, people, um, or, you know, if you have even a couple different animals, try to give them different colors, even if it's just a slight little difference. It just helps. It helps add elements to your drawing that I think help. You know, it's not as boring to look at if you have different colors and looks to it. Oh, now you want to play nice, Tiger. Tiger's right next to me here as I'm coloring. And she's uh, she's observing everything I'm doing. Yet she wouldn't get on film for the introduction of this video. <sighs> Tiger, how do you expect to make it in Hollywood if you don't take the extra step to get in front of the camera? <laughs> If only cats could listen to us, right? Okay, so I made her a blonde. I'm going to give him darker hair. And... Here we go. This is going to be good. Awesome. And with that too, I'm going to add another layer and this is where I'm going to color their eyes whoops and with this one too I'm going to give him some a pink tongue because he's got his mouth open and we're gonna start some background colors with this too so Again, it's this, this layer I think is going to do the trick for this. I'm going to start in this far corner. And what I love to use for backgrounds is under the brushes category, go to painting. And the round brush, I feel, does the trick. I usually put the opacity at about uh, 66 or so. You can adjust that accordingly. Brush size, that's going to change a lot. Um, but you'll see, I, I like the way it looks this i start by pressing down hard then i lighten up quite a bit and i got that little corner done now i'm going to start the main area we see how it has like that painted look to it i really like that i think it i think it looks like an actual you know like i i, I painted this by hand and uh it's a cool effect so i i run with it i just go with that and i think it works really well All right. So here we go. I'm going to do this background now. And I'm just going to make it a little bit darker. I'm going to start on the bottom and kind of work my way up a little bit. And 
and you know what this is where I slipped because I have the cat down there so what I want to do actually I changed my mind on this whole on the layer I was gonna do all this on I have you know it's the same layer I did the eyes and this little corner and I'm gonna start fresh by going down to layer 5 is where I have the wall and everything you can see and the carpet I'm gonna do a layer above that to start filling this part in because otherwise as you just saw and I had to go back and delete it went over like the cat and, and things and um, this will make it so much easier because everything that's above this now is not going to be affected see I can go over across the cat skin or not skin fur and it's not going to make a impact on it does that make sense um, anything below the other color layers is not get affected so let's try this again again I'm going to go with a little darker color I'm going to put that brush size all the way up to 100 for this actually and that will change depending on what resolution you want to draw these in um, that's something I didn't mention from the beginning but it doesn't really matter because you can pick and everyone's going to have their different um, opinions on this and do what you will I make this at a 600 dpi resolution um off the bat and you can you can adjust that on procreate you can choose what color you want to make it or i'm sorry what size you want to make it and i like going with 600 dpi that's really high for a lot of people a lot of people just go either 72 for web or like 300 dpi just for regular print but i, I work at a high layer um high resolution i should say so that will vary and that will that will impact your brush sizes and everything too just to let you know um, but you can adjust that accordingly. You can change that right now if you want to uh, 600 DPI in Photoshop. And uh, with Procreate, it's not like you're using original scanned in images, so it should be fine. Um, actually, what I'm going to do now, everything else below that. So I have the cart, I'm going to do the carpeting next, actually. And I go through and scan all this. With the S tool, I just highlight it, trace it, and now I'm going to touch that carpet to get that blue, and I'm going to go dark with it. We're going to start off by doing kind of a big area toward the bottom. I'm lightly pressing down, hardly at all, and just give it a little contrast there. I'm going to move the brush size down now and do the bottom of this couch around the cat. The rat's tail, I'm going to give him kind of a shadow here. I press down harder toward the rat tail and then I lighten up a little bit and then I'm just going to do a little more shadowing in here just to give it like that so you can tell it's kind of a little wavy look I'd, I'd call it you know like um, you can tell that it's carpet just by giving it some contrast so there we go and next, you can see layer six, I got the door, the window, and the curtain. So I'm going to go above that, and I'm going to start with the door over here. Whoops. And I know today's video is actually a little bit longer than usual. So if you're still hanging in there, I hope you're enjoying it, and I hope uh, this is actually beneficial for you. But I think with a lot of these two... You know, there's going to be different elements and different parts that you'll you'll use and parts you won't use. And maybe you know a lot of this as well. Um, so when it comes to coloring this part of it, um, you know, if you don't do any coloring, I'm not sure if you're still there or not. But if you do, I hope you get a lot of kind of kind of just see exactly what I do. And um, if you like it, great. If not, you can fine tune this, adjust it accordingly and come up with something that's awesome for your art, you know, because everyone's art's going to be a little bit different and that's what makes it uh art <laughs> if we all have the same art uh i wouldn't have a job i would not be a full-time cartoonist because everything would look the same i'm actually going to go back to my original layer four and I, i'm going to add a little door there we go that just bugs me since i didn't have that because most doors have a little lock system in it you know and I just noticed I didn't have that in there. So I added that real quick. Now I'm going to go back to that layer I was working on and get to my lovely green curtains. Probably the most stylish thing you're going to see in any comic strip out there. 
is uh, green curtains like mine, let me tell you. So with these, I'm gonna give it a little bit lighter of a look toward the window. And that's just because you can assume, you know, maybe there's some sunshine coming in, something. Um, and I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. I'm gonna add some lighter elements toward the inside here and here. And then I'm gonna darken it up in some spots as well. And I usually try to go right along the light elements and that gives it that shadowy effect. You can see, so we'll just do some right there, a little bit there. And I'm kind of just following along this little sketches I made. And there you go. It's got that nice little shadowy effect to it. Um, with the outdoor area, I don't know if you've seen me make uh, the sky before, but I usually switch up the brush. I go to a water brush which I think gives it a really awesome effect. And I'm gonna just give it a couple couple of clouds, nothing major, just on top. But you see how the water brush is definitely more of, uh, is fluffy the best term? It just, it has that more sky look to it, I feel. So I did some dark blue on top. I'm gonna do some yellow on the bottom, not much, and leave it just at that. I think that's good. Perfecto. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to do the rat and the couch. So I'm going to start a new layer over that. And I'm going to outline the rat. And I'm just doing his fur right now. And I'm going to darken it. Again, I held my finger on the canvas and it got me the color I needed. I'm going to go back to my round brush and use that and here we go we're going to actually really make some highlights on this ratty rat rat make him real ratty <laughs> as ratty as we can so on the bottom i'm making it very dark gray uh and then i'm kind of just tapping and going real loose with the fur here i just want to make it like not perfect you know like it's not round it's really ratty so add some dots to it tap on and off the screen then you can scribble around the bottom a little bit and then on the top i'm gonna give them some highlights of just a few and then i'm gonna go back into the gray and go over some of that actually a little bit it's a little too much there i think you can see I have a little some parts down here I appeared to have missed. So I'm going to go ahead and, and it's because when I um, went over it with the, the marquee tool, I didn't get right to the line, but that's okay. Again, it's all good because we can fix that and even down here too. Just make sure you have it. There's no white spots like on the bottom because that will really stick out and look pretty bad. So just adding a few more dark little areas cool i like it all right next up we're going to do the couch um again this isn't a, a beautiful purple couch that you won't see in too many other comic strips i don't think garfield has a purple couch quite as elaborate as this one let me tell you so I'm gonna go ahead and again, I got my round brush. I'm gonna darken up the purple and back here, um, I'm gonna give it some really kind of dark between the, the two heads here. See how dark that's getting? I wish you could actually see my, my pencil and I may do that sometime, um, have like a demonstration where you can see my pencil and my actual movements. But I feel like the screen, recording the screen like I'm doing, it gives you a better idea of what I'm doing in a lot of ways. So my hand's not in the way. And um, if I explain it fairly well, I think you'll get the gist of it. Uh, so that's why I do it this way. But yes, in the future, I may try a course or two with uh, without having just a screen recording. So anyway, as you can see, I went light on the top and then darker toward the, toward the bottom. And I think that's gonna be good for the couch. 
So we have everything done except for the people. And what I'm going to do now, I'm not going to worry about new layers over all the rest of this. I'm going to do one over layer 10. And this is going to be layer 15. And this is where I'm going to kind of really finish it off. I'm going to go through each little piece and I'm going to start with the rat tail and I'm not going to do the marquee over or anything. This is all freehand. I don't feel the need to, um, to outline an area and do it that way. You know, the outlines keep everything inside the marquee area. If that makes sense. When you use the S tool, well, I don't feel the need to use that right now. I'm just kind of freehanding it. Um, this rat tail is going to be kind of shiny on the top. It's a shiny, like, Wee. <laughs> Are rat tails shiny? I don't know. But this one is. Um, I think it gives it kind of that slimy look, you know, which makes it kind of gross. I like rats. I, I think rats are fine. They're rodents, you know, they're just trying to get by like the rest of us, but um, they do have some nasty habits. So I think that's probably good for that. I'm going to do a little bit on this backboard here. Just take a little bit of brown, put it in that. Not much. That'll do it for that. Now for the kitty, we're going to do some highlights um, first. And guys, don't, you know, you can see I'm kind of going through this quickly and that's a good thing. Don't think too much into this. Um, unless you're drawing something for like, oh, the net, what is it? like the Museum of Art in uh, downtown Chicago or something that's going to be hung up on a <laughs> their, their main dis display for the next year. I mean, they're comics, you know. Um, I'm not saying make them sloppy. I'm saying I like to kind of not think too much into a lot of... Don't think too hard into it. Think hard into it, but don't think too hard into it. Does that make sense? Like, I'm not going to spend a half hour, an hour coloring this cat. I'm going to go through. I'm giving him some dark highlights now, kind of where the shading would be. Figure out where your light's coming from. In this particular case, it's coming from kind of above and, um, you know, inside the ears here, I'm going to make them a little bit darker. And down here, I'm going to give him some shadows on the feet. And I think that's going to be pretty good. I'm going to give him I'm going to take this up to white, give him kind of a sparkly nose too. Oops. You can see I got a little sloppy on the carpet there. It looks like a hairball, doesn't it? <laughs> so, all right, I'm going to work on his mouth now and just give him some shadow down there. Some shadow down here. That makes the tooth stick out. Perfect. I think that's good for our cat. Now for her shirt, I'm going to give just some basic shadows here. Whoops, I'm going to take that up a notch to a size 28. And just add some down there, some little, little elements of shade. For this guy, I'm actually going for his uh, yellow t-shirt. I'm going to actually use the S tool and go around this just so that I stay in bounds because He's, he's right on the border, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't want to go outside of that if possible. So I just darkened it up a little bit. And there we go. I don't have to think about it. I can just go down here and really kind of darken that in, darken in this little area. And perfect. Okay. Give him just a little bit of light here. So I'm just sleeve to make it kind of really pop out. And I'm just going to blend this a little bit by going with the same color of his original shirt just to kind of fine tune that more so. Perfect. I like it. Okay. And now we just have the skin. And we are just about finished up here with this cartoon. And again, I'll post the caption and everything on the end of this video so you know exactly what it is, what it says, what the joke is, and um, we'll be good. But as you can see, I'm just adding some shadowy highlights to the face now. I put usually underneath the neck, I add some. 
underneath the nose, maybe a little bit on the chin, not much, I'm just lightly pressing down. And you have the ear. And on her too, I'm gonna just do like the back area a little bit, ear, nose. And her hair is what's gonna require some highlights. I'm gonna make it dark first, like in this little area. This was it's gonna really make it pop out too, which is great. We're gonna want that. And let's see, I'll do that. And now we're gonna give it some really kind of light highlights. Again, I feel like this makes it really kind of pop out, and it does. It's not just like I feel like it does, it does. It's toward the top, you know, because that's where the light is coming from. And with this guy too, he's gonna have lighter hair on top. I think I'll probably leave it at that with him. I'm not gonna uh, go too dark with his hair or anything. Put some there. And I think that might be good. I'm gonna go to the, make this kind of really white and just a couple highlights around the noses. Very gently, nothing new or too crazy. And I think that's it guys. That is our finished product right there. Um, what's going to happen next is I'm going to go in. I'm going to send this. Well, I'm going to send this over to Photoshop. Um, you can do this however you want. There's technology to, to add captions right on the iPad if you want. You can just write them in if you want to. But I usually send it over to Photoshop at this stage. I'll add the caption to it, um, the copyright to it, and I'll resize it and get it ready for syndication and to mark it out to have it licensed and all kinds of good stuff. This can go on a t-shirt, anything. Um, I get into all all kinds of ways to make money off cartoons um, and a lot of my videos and my course. But uh, at that, guys, I'm going to leave it as is. I'm going to show you the final result. Uh, maybe next time we do a cat cartoon, I can get my cat tiger to cooperate instead of just meowing through the whole video. But We'll see what happens. In the meantime, guys, I hope you really enjoyed this. Leave your comment below. I'd like to hear your feedback, what you think. Um, and definitely, if you haven't taken my free course also, uh, take that. Take it. You might find some really good, uh, get some good things out of that, that you'll need to make some money off your, co your comics or just to draw better. Um, anyways, I will catch you next time.